Hello, my name is Ted Moore. I'm from the University of Michigan. And I'm serving here on Expedition 320 to the Tropical Pacific as an expert in radial area. This is a very special part of the ocean. It's highly organically productive, lots of life uh, living here and supplying little microfossil shells to the sea floor. I'm studying one of those shells. And Tom is studying the calcareous nanofossils, some other shells, and Lizette, the planktonic forams, another group of, of planktonic microfossils. Hi, my name's Tom Dunkley Jones. I'm from University College um, in London. Um, and as Ted just said, I work on um, tiny fossils um, called coccolith pores. Um, and when they're fossilized, they're called calcareous nanofossils. And this is Lizette's. I'm a doctoral student from Rice University. And what I do is uh, basically seeing some tiny microfossils that are made of, of calcite and they are called foraminifera. So what we do, we are one of the first people to see the cores when they first drilled up from the, uh, from the seabed. And they're just outside a door, um, just behind our laboratory here. And we go and take the bottom of each core, bring it into our um, preparation room, which is just um, next door. And then we do various preparation techniques. Um, I will just uh, take a tiny bit of sediment and smear it out on a slide, and then stick a cover slip straight on that, so I can look at it down the microscope here. Um, Ted will do various um, chemical preparations um, to dissolve away all the calcium carbonate, the sort of limestone material, and have a look at just the silicious um, microfossils that are in the sediment. And Lizette will normally um, sieve the material to try and look at a slightly coarser um, microfossil group, a slightly larger planktonic foraminifera, and then we'll dry those and, and try and pick through those with the microscope um, here. So there are various different techniques depending on um, which fossil group um, we're concerned with. And our purpose over here is to tell other people what is the age of the sediments. And why we have to use three different kind of microfossils is basically because sometimes they are very well preserved in terms of calcite, but sometimes other times radiolarians that are made of silica are better preserved than, uh, than calci calcitic uh, microorganisms. So what we do is trying to combine all of these microfossils, trying to constrain the age of the sediments, basically because some of them appear and disappear in different uh, times and they evolve pretty quickly so we can tell other people what exactly is the age of the, the, the sediments deposited at a certain time. Now the evolution of these microfossils are key to our establishing an age for the sediments. And sometimes these evolutionary jumps are tied to changes in climate. For example, we're currently drilling um, a time interval called the eocene oligocene boundary, which is really concerned with a very rapid um, cooling event in Earth's history with the sudden growth of an Antarctic ice sheet similar to today's um, extent. So although we're a long way from Antarctica here in the tropical Pacific, we're seeing the effects of that ice, ice sheet growth here in the sediments that we're looking at, and even in terms of, of the, these microfossils that we're looking at. Um, because the surface oceans were, were changing at that time, perhaps becoming more productive, um, we see changes in the evolution um, and extinction of some forms um, through this interval. So we can tell a lot just by the different um, organisms that were living through these rapid um, periods of climatic change. But not only that, we can also measure different kind of things in the calcitic organisms like for example, the planktonic foraminifera, we can run some analysis of geochemistry uh, in which we can tell, for example, the t ocean temperature at a certain time, or we can tell differences of the, of the acidity of the seawater. Or we can look at just the circulation patterns of the deep waters and the surface waters. We can check out the uh, productivity of the surface waters. All of these geochemical techniques are a little extra stuff we do after we get back home. So what we do here on the ship is really form the basis um, for our kind of age determination of these sediments and it's the kind of basic information that all the other science that will happen sort of post cruise will really sort of be built on and we'll be involved in that looking at evolutionary studies, looking at the geochemistry of the shells, trying to understand how temperatures and climate and productivity have changed through time in this equatorial Pacific zone. And the equatorial Pacific is so important it's the world's largest ocean and over tens of millions of years has really played one of the dominant um, roles in the Earth's climate system.